sci-fi model action everyone. Uh, I'm starting up the build on the Mobius Seaview kit and what I'm going to do here first, last night I glued the two main uh, forward halves of the hull together here. I've got this big seam on the bottom and I've got one that runs all the way across the top all the way down to the tip of the uh, searchlight area here. Now this section here I'm not too worried about because it's covered with another plate uh, which is basically the missile silos that have all the little t uh, firing tubes for the missiles on the top. So that seam's going to be covered, but from here forward on the top and this area down here, I want to hide this seam. So what I'm going to start doing here is I've got a piece of uh, 320 grit sandpaper and a small piece of that. I don't, I don't need a huge piece to sand this down, but there are some little, uh, a little bit of glue that's uh, sticking up here and there's uh, a raised edge on the seam and this is hard plastic. So what I want to do is I want to sand this down basically smooth first before I even begin using any kind of a filling putty on this. Uh, because the putty will sand easier than the plastic does and if you don't get rid of this line here first you're just going to keep sanding putty off and that line's going to keep coming back so what you want to do on a model kit like this is uh, if you're going to correct the seams make sure you sand all this down first and then do your putty work after that so I'm going to begin right here by uh, sanding down this forward area here and just trying to get this line worked down I apologize a little bit for the noise. It's awful hot out in the shop here today. I've got my air conditioner running, so I'll try to stay close to the camera so you guys can hear me, and and uh, hopefully I won't have to run the air conditioner every day when I'm doing that this summer, but it's been very hot so far this year. But what I'm doing here is I'm just working this down. You can see there's kind of a white uh, line forming here right at the edge of this seam, and that's where the plastic is being worked down. I'm just keeping my fingers nice and flat, putting two fingers behind it and just working that down. I don't want to sand too much on this light up here. This is That's some detail we don't want to get rid of. If, if there's a little bit of a seam on that, I'll do a little something different to take care of that up before we get ready to paint this, but it's just this big seam here up the middle that I'm worried about right now. And this 320 paper will cut this down pretty fast. still feel a little bit of a raised line there on this piece. This piece is slightly sticking up more than the one closest to you. So we'll just keep working it down. I can see a little shadow here along the edge. That kind of helps you as a sanding guide. You see this little shadow just before this raises up here where it's not being sanded. That means there's a low spot in there and that's why the paper's not touching it. Once that all starts to sand out smooth, you'll know that you're getting pretty well flush on the whole surface. And it's going to be nice and straight. And you can see right here a little uh, trick I'm going to show you too. Uh, your sandpaper tends to clog up um, with plastic or filler or whatever you're sanding and you can get a little bit more life out of it by adding a little water on there. You can even put a little bit of water on the surface. They call this wet sanding. Uh, this is actually paper that's made for wet sanding and uh, it's what I prefer to use on most of my sanding projects. <clears throat> and it just makes the paper last so much longer and it actually helps the paper to cut a lot better too. And we're not hurting this model at all with nothing installed in it or anything. The water's not hurting it at all. We'll dry it off when we're done here and uh, 
see what it looks like, but just by switching to that and adding a little bit of water and getting rid of that buildup that was getting in my paper, I'm already cutting the plastic a lot better, which I can, you'll be able to feel it in your hand when you're sanding. I can see that I'm getting rid of this uh, seam quite a bit faster as well. It's literally disappearing right in front of me. And again, you're, you're just trying to get it to level out. You don't want to, you're not worried about it being flawless at this point because we're going to put a little bit of filler in there to, to hide any imperfections. And once that filler is sanded out and the edges of it are sanded smooth, it'll completely disappear once you primer over it. Again, there are a lot of you out there that have already done this and gone through this, but I get lots of requests from people who are just trying this kind of a thing for the first time, so I don't mind showing this to you. Um, it's part of the building process on most, most model kits if you're going for the realistic look. Get, getting rid of the seams is one of the best things you can do to a model to improve its appearance. And again, with this 320 paper, it will cut through the plastic pretty quick, so uh, if you're sanding around any detail areas or things like that, you want to be pretty careful because it'll it'll take that down pretty fast. Up here at the top, uh, it's, it's much more level. I'm not seeing a drop off uh, from one piece to the other. I still feel a pretty good high spot right here at the crown. The edge down here is looking pretty good. But this is just going to require minimum sanding up here on the top. All right, so you're getting the basic technique of this. I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you and show you the whole, it's probably going to take me another 10, 10 minutes or so of sanding here to straighten this top part out. I'll do that and I'll come back and uh, show you how we're starting to work on the bottom area sanding this part out. So we'll see you then. Okay, we're back everyone and uh, I wanted to show you guys real quick one of the products that I use for uh, filling these seams on these plastic model kits. Uh, there are many different types of uh, putties that are out there. This being one, and I'll show you this other one that I use. Uh, this one's called, uh, made by a company called Squadron Products, white putty. It's been around the modeling industry and hobby shops for a long time. And uh, they're both good products for filling seams, but uh, this one seems to be gaining quite a bit of popularity in the modeling community. I've been using it for a few years now, but uh, it's it's very good stuff. It's it's a soft red kind of a paste uh, in form, and basically you just squeeze it out of the tube with a little bit of it on your fingertip, or you can get one of these little. Uh, I think I have one on handy here. This is a little kind of a trowel for uh, spreading this stuff in small areas, or if you like, say there's an area, a detail area, you want to kind of pack it in there and then smooth it over or something like that. These little tools are available at hobby shops and things like that. But a lot of times I just use my good old finger on it. But uh, the difference between the two, you can see this one's kind of a red color and this one is a white color and it dries white as well. They do have different characteristics when you use them though. Uh, this one tends to dry slower and it tends to be a little bit harder uh, when you go to sand it. It doesn't feather edge out, it doesn't smooth out quite as nice. Uh, and it is what they call hot. In other words, it will, it, it can slightly affect plastic or paint uh, and react with it a little bit. So you can actually just, you know, really slightly melt the plastic when you use this stuff. Um, this stuff here is not considered hot at all. It put, you can put it on a model. It doesn't leave any, it doesn't have any reactions with the plastic. It, anyway, styrene, whatever, which is what I've uh, used it on mostly. So I, I've never had any problems with reactions or, you know, attacking the styrene or anything. This tends to dry quicker, and it also sands out a little easier. It's not it's not quite as hard. Uh, it doesn't dry quite as hard as uh, this product does. Now there could be some different things you're um, doing as well. Now, for example, on a model where you would have some type of a wing, let's say on the uh, one of the models I can recall off the top of my head was the Romulan Bird of Prey, uh, the classic kit from AMT that has the wings that kind of stick out, and there's a seam on the side. Well, using this. Uh, I found out that it worked great and it filled it in right away, but any kind of minimal amount of flexing or any anything like that that happens on the model, uh, you can start to get these little micro cracks because this, in the end, does not dry completely hard. It's always kind of a, it always is a little bit soft, and this product will dry very hard. So I went back and repaired that model with some of this stuff, and I haven't had a problem with it since. Um, so there are different things. Now, this area here that we're going to fill in on the, 
on the Seaview model here is not what I consider a load bearing area where it's going to be flexing a lot there in the middle or anything. And so this is going to be perfect for um, doing our seam filling work on this uh, particular gap that we have to take care of. Like I mentioned earlier, it won't, uh, we won't have to worry about any issues with flexing or cracking or anything like that. And this is going to dry for us really fast. And the same thing down here at the bottom, we're not going to have a lot of flexing or anything going on. Just something to consider if you're thinking about, you know, a spaceship model that has some kind of maybe appendages sticking out like wings or, or uh, airplane models or what have you that have some kind of load bearing area that might flex a little bit. Consider that when you're thinking about these two types of putties. Um, so here we go. What we're going to do first is we're going to, we don't want to, we don't want to uh, get putty all over the model here. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape this off with some basic uh, painters tape here and I'm gonna I'm gonna tape probably within a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the seam here and just run that by, back as far as I plan on going as far as covering up the seam which is right back to the edge of this uh, area where the uh, ballistic missile hatch cover plate starts that's the only area we need to worry about as far as seams go and I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides here I'm gonna cover up the windows and what this does is, uh, similar to masking for paint, it's going to only allow my Bondo to spread out so far here, my, my filler putty. Uh, it's only going to, whoops, I'm getting fumble fingered here. It's only going to uh, allow it to spread out so far, and I'll be able to contain this and keep it nice and small, so my sanding is going to be minimal, and it's just going to be located in the seam area only and save me a little bit of time. So let's, uh, let's start putting some of this on. Um, it tends to get dry at the top of the uh, tube there so I usually knock that first little layer off throw that away and start with a fresh batch and like I said I'm staying away from this little searchlight thing uh, but I'm just using the tip of my finger and just making sure I push that into that seam just a little bit I don't want to smear it over the top of it as much as I want to kind of try and force it down into that seam just a little bit and then it'll kind of self level itself out as you keep applying this pressure uh, as you as you put it on and it doesn't need to be super thick either. Uh, if you've done a good job on your prepar uh, preparation sanding of that plastic part that we just did, you shouldn't need a whole lot of this to cover up your seams. Uh, it might take one or two tries. When you sand, you may get a few pits in it that come out or something like that. And uh, you'll want to take care of that. But other than that, usually one or two coats of this and it'll do the trick. And again, this dries pretty fast. If you, you can probably see it in the camera. It's already starting to turn light in some of the spots. Uh, the thinner you put it on, the faster it dries. Keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do is turn this over now, and we're going to do the same thing here on the bottom. Just going to tape this off, kind of right up to that edge. And that way I'm not getting this stuff all over the model. Okay, got that on there. The same thing, just put a little bit on my fingertip here again. I hope the camera's picking this up well for you. And I'll just lightly put a bead of this all the way down where that seam was and I'll make sure I pack it in there real good where these little indents were where the sprue was located. We've now sanded that down to a low spot and not a high spot. And if you work it over the edges a little bit here, that's okay, we're gonna sand that all out. But we're not getting big blobs all over the bottom of the model, so that's a good thing. And I'll probably need just one more little dab here because this area right where the sprue was connected I want to make sure that that's filled in really good the seam itself was almost gone already just from the sanding All right, and presto, there we have uh, the top and the bottom seam uh, taken care of. And what we'll do is we'll let this dry for about 15 or 20 minutes. It may take a little longer. It's awful humid out here today. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll come back. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'll come back, and I'll pull the tape, and we'll start sanding this thing down. And uh, we'll see what kind of result we get from doing all this preparation. We'll get back with that in just a little bit. See you then. Well, we're back. Well, our spot putty here has had a chance to settle down and dry now for about 15 or 20 minutes. So it should be good and ready to sand. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull off the tape. 
and we should have these nice clean lines on there that's uh, kept our kept our putty off the rest of the model and that looks pretty good and I'll go ahead and I think I'll leave the stuff on the bottom until I sand this top part first now what I'm going to do here is uh, get another new piece of paper and just give this a quick little shot of water here that's going to help uh, keep my paper from getting all loaded up. We're just going to work this down. This stuff stands off really nice and easy with this water added to it and make sure that it's, if it doesn't sand nice and smooth for you, if it's coming off in chunks or anything like that, it's not dry, so you might want to give it a little bit more drying time before you try to sand it again. Um, and also it's important to make sure that your glue is good and dry underneath. I let this dry overnight before I applied this uh, putty on here, or the glue will come through the seam and start getting mixed in with your putty and it'll it'll start coming off in chunks. This is all sanding out really good and just keep squirting it down with a little bit of water every time you feel that your uh, paper starting to clog up a little bit and it just like brings the paper right back to life and it starts digging in a little bit better. working the excess putty around around this little uh, piece that's got a little bit of detail on it. It's all coming out of there nice and easy. get this cleaned up a little bit here just to see what we're looking with and this little area right here at the tip I can see I got a little bit of excess putty still in there you don't want the putty really anywhere except on the seam um, you just want to try to make all the edges of it feather out really nice and lay down flat so when you put paint on it there's no edge there it all looks like it blends right in with the paint Okay, and that uh, feels perfectly smooth to me. So it should look really nice with some primer on it. And again, if you prime it, which I'm gonna do that here in a second, but if you prime it and you see a little bit on there still, just sand it a little bit further. Your primer can actually act as a filler as well. So if the seam is just barely noticeable, try a couple of coats of primer with drying time in between and then come back and sand that real lightly with some lighter grain paper, like some 600. And that'll probably take the rest of the seam and make it disappear without without the need to uh, put more putty on there. Okay, so let's flip this over and start taking care of the bottom side here. This uh, blue tape is very good. It doesn't leave any kind of residue or anything on the model either. No sticky glue left over that might ruin your uh, paintwork when you're starting that. And I'm going to again grab another new piece of sandpaper here. And let's just start working this down. I'm going to kind of wrap this around a little bit and uh, so I can get the edges as well. This is sanding out very nice and easy. I'm not putting much effort into it at all. No need to overexert yourself. It's, it's where the beauty of this particular brand of spot putty works really well. It does sand very nice. That white squadron putty that I showed you a little while ago, it, 
it definitely dries a little bit harder than this stuff so you can expect to spend a little bit more time sanding on that You can see these little spots where our putty is kind of staying there. That's where our low spots were, where those styrene sprue marks were. And that's exactly what you'd expect to see. The putty's staying right in that low spot and the surface is sanding out nice and level. And again, we don't need any putty on the sides, so I'm gonna sand the sides of this rib pretty clean. I don't really need any putty on there at all. Just mainly in that seam. If there are any imperfections or anything in the plastic there that you see putty staying in, that's where some maybe some small pitting or some low spots were in the plastic that are being filled in by that putty. Okay, let's give this a little rinse. And it's time to wipe it down. It's looking pretty good. You can see it all comes off really easy. That powder, that water residue that you're getting doesn't leave any uh, traces on it. It doesn't stick, so I found that this stuff really works good with plastic. And our seams are going to be pretty good. I can see a little spot right here where there's still a little bit of extra putty. And I'll go ahead and smooth that up. But you guys get the general idea of this. What I'll do right now is I'll clean this up just a little bit more, then I'm going to take it over to the spray booth area and I'm going to dust down just a little bit of primer on this and show you that, and we'll see how our seam looks. I'll be back with that in a second or two here. Be right back. Here we are in the painting area, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start putting some primer on this so we can uh, take a look at how our seam is looking and how the model is going to shape up as far as the paint's going to look on the front of this. Now, what I did is on most of my models, that I've done in the past, I've used this product here called Plastic. It's made by DuPont. The part number, as you see there, is A2330S. And what that is, is it's a adhesion promoter and it makes paint stick to plastic really, really good. So uh, if I'm gonna be doing any taping or painting and then tape, pulling tape off of my paint, I wanna make sure that I'm not uh, pulling paint off of the uh, model when I'm doing that. So. I lay down a coat of this. I've scuffed this whole model down. I sanded this putty down with 320, as you remember. And now I've came back and I've sanded the entire outside surfaces with some 600 grit paper. And that's just going to make my uh, basic kind of surface on the top of this plastic that's going to give my paint something to stick to. And then adding this will make sure my paint sticks on there really good. So I've let that dry a little bit. What I'm going to do now is put some of this, uh, I just use regular automotive high build primer. Pretty much all the different brands that are out there are pretty good. And um, I'm just going to be putting some light coats on this. And I use this little heat gun. Uh, a lot of you guys know over from my Trekworks channel that I use this all the time. But some of you new to the channel here may not know that. And I'm just going to lay down a little bit of primer on here very lightly. And just force it to dry with this little heat gun here. Right now, I'm really worried about is the seam area. I'm not trying to cover up the entire model just yet. And just like magic, our seam is almost gone. Uh, I can see just a tiny little bit coming through right in this area right here, but this area up here by the windows looks really good. Up here on the top, it looks really good. So before I worry about putting any uh, extra putty back in there, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this a little bit after I let it dry. 
with some light paper and see how that looks. Now being that I'm drying it like this, you can handle it pretty quick, so I'm going to turn it over here and I'm going to start laying down some primer on this seam on the bottom. And I can see just a little gap right there in that area right there. And that one I don't think primer is going to fix. I may have to put just a little bit more of that spot putty on there, but no big deal. Uh, the rest of it looks absolutely perfect. And as you can see, we've got not a really thick coat on there as well, and it's already dry. Uh, primer, if you kind of help it dry like that a little bit, it'll dry really quick if you don't put it on there too thick. Um, so here's our front. You can see just a little bit of a hint of, a, of the uh, seam right here at the top of the crown. But I'll come back and touch that up with some putty and just lightly sand that down if I have to, or just sand the primer first and straighten that right out. But there you have it. There's the initial work on the C-View here. What will be coming up next is I'll be starting on the interior assembly. On the next video, I'm going to show how I pick up, pick up the paints that I'm going to use for that, the colors that I'm going to choose, and how I mix some of those colors up. I use my own custom mixing here and um, match colors that I'm going to pull right off of the... Uh, colors that were used on the actual uh, set from the movie. The colors of the chairs, the colors of the walls, the color of the floor. Try to capture all as many details as I can and I'll start making up that paint. We'll start building the interior and we'll do some test fitting in here to see how it fits. And then we're going to make sure our lighting is going to be uh, what we thought it would be when we did our little test there at the beginning. Now, one of the things I'm going to be adding to this model as well is I'm going to have two switches on my base so that I can run the model with um, the normal lighting coming through and another switch will allow me to shut that lighting off and come back with kind of the red emergency lighting that you see uh, that they go to in a lot of ships where it's all kind of red in there and that'll come out through the windows that'll look nice and then the uh, Polaris missile that this thing launches they give you a nice little clear part with that I'm gonna put a LED inside there an orange one that'll light that little plume up and I think I'm gonna put a separate switch in for that so that I can take the the uh, rock it off of the model when I want to and close the hatch and have it displayed normal or I can just turn that switch on and put the little uh, missile on there and it'll look like it's being launched so that'll be a pretty cool little addition to this so just one of the other little plans I've worked out for this kit so until we see you in the next update where we do that interior work and start doing some painting I'll see you a little bit down the road and as I like to tell everybody happy modeling you guys